Welcome back to Chippo Fishing. We're tournament, big eye crappy man tournament here at Jordan Lake. Uh, special guest today, partner, Anthony Blanton. Anthony. <laughs> Anthony, fishing man. Uh, there's Mr. Uh, Kiran up there in the red nitro. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Uh, we've already boated one fish and uh, tournament rules, live well check from uh, seven to three is fishing time. Weigh in at four. Thanks folks. Uh, small fish, little fleet grows. Anthony with the netter. Pretty work, pretty work. That's a tournament fish right there. Pretty work, brother. Okay, our strategy is we're sitting off of the structure for a little while until they uh, come in. No. Anthony with the tourney. Tournament fish. Yes, Holding this one down. Huh? Holding this one down. 1.76 with Anthony. Holding them down. <laughs> Double hook up. This one fucking it. Hailed it. fish need the net okay lift your right foot no 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 I got two fish doubled up <laughs> doubled up Foot up. Let me get the net. Let your foot, right foot up. Could be your first three pounder. <laughs> Shoot, I would love that. Especially in a tournament. Sweet. Uh, uh, it's large mouth. Huge bass, Anthony. Huge he, bass. He stretched the rod and hook. That move of the hook. I think we should weigh him. <laughs> That's a tournament winner right there. Anthony. Hold him out here for the side. <laughs> Let's weigh that puck. Six, 
6.74. It does. Almost seven. Almost seven. Pretty work, Anthony. Pretty work. Take you one more. Bye bye, girl. Down you go. <laughs> Beautiful sight. Beautiful sight. Congratulations, brother. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, the littlest guy. Oh, another little one. What's first place so far? It's a nice way. Is anybody keeping them? Andy Dick, do you want some fish? Get hey. You guys take your fish? Yeah. Take your fish and get a picture with Andy Dick right here in front of the Oh, okay. I'm going to Hey, you can probably do it back, dude. Yeah, I'm going to run on this. Can we weigh the water? <laughs> What's y'all's boat number, you remember? Uh, I'm What's sorry, I don't know. Corbin. Corbin? Yes, sir. Yeah. Corbin and Black. Number six. Okay. All right, now give me seven feet. Okay, can I just go ahead and pour it? Yep. Yep. Okay. Oh, one, two, three. Sorry about that. All right, four, five, six, seven. One baby. <laughs> can y'all believe he's going to get your picture made right there with that guy, okay? <clears throat> guy seven. Right. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. 8.250. 8 Put your bug and then grab you a couple of fish out there in each hand and let him get a picture of you. Okay? Pick out a couple of big fish. Andy Dick! Right here, wait on Picture up. Andy, smile for the camera. <laughs> The leaders are getting nervous. Plop, plop, plop. They put release them. The lake level will go back, back up. Twelve point one six five. No big fish. Well, that was in that picture. Oh, I laid them out. 
Two and a half. I bet somebody just put out here already for them. Somebody was already put out here. They ain't they ain't biting like that. <laughs> Decision to come here instead of Harris Lake. I um, agree. So, but next week, I mean the next tournament, the first is here, same place, same time. Uh, Y'all listen up. Uh, we got a. There's a good friend of mine. A lot, probably a lot of you guys know him. If you've ever been up to Kerr Lake and you went into Bobcat's store to get bait or directions or fishing instructions or help with fishing, <coughs> Bobcat's a top of the notch guy. Yes, sir. Well, his son has almost died three times in the last day. He's really sick. He's in a coma right now. So. Before we go any further, we're going to take our hats off. I don't care if it's raining or snowing or sleeping. And we're going to say a prayer for little Bobby. Bobby, we, Lord, we do thank you so much for today and the lake that you gave us to fish in, to, to catch fish and enjoy it out here on the water. But Father, I know a man right now, and you know him, and his name is Bobby. And he's hurting for his son. Who's really sick, little Bobby. So we pray for him right now, Lord, that your hand would be on him, that you would touch him and raise him up from that bed, just like you have many people that we've prayed for here, right here in this circle of God. We pray for guys, and they're standing here right now because you answered those prayers. Well, Lord, we also pray for little Bobby that you'd raise him up off of that bed and get him back out on the lake fishing. But most importantly, that if he does, that you do bring him out, Lord, that he'll tell the world what you've done for him, that you saved him, and that he'll tell people about you and what you've done for him. So, Lord, we do pray for him, and we pray that you bring him up and bring him back to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And just like we do every tournament, at the end of everything, before we hand out any money or any prizes, we always share a little bit of wisdom from God's Word. It takes just a minute to do that. So if you would, just pay attention to this time and the words that I read, okay? I don't know if you've, any of you have ever watched the movie The Ten Commandments. How many of you have ever seen the movie The Ten Commandments? The Ten Commandments is... It's not all right, but there is some parts about it that's right that goes, goes along with the Bible. But I want to read this for you. Then Moses called all the elders of Israel together and said to them, Go pick out a lamb and a young goat for each of your families and slaughter the lamb. Drain the blood into a basin. Take a bundle of hyssop branches and dip it into the blood and brush the hyssop across the top of the door frames of your houses. So what he was doing, he was dipping that blood, dipping that hyssop, that little broom, into the lamb's blood and putting it on the doorpost of their house. Why did God put that blood on the doorpost and told them to put that, door, that blood on the doorpost of their house? Listen to this. So the people of Israel did just as the Lord commanded through Moses. And that night at midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn sons in Egypt. Only those who had the blood of the Lamb on their doorpost were saved. Only those that had the blood on the doorpost were saved. I don't know about you and your family. But there's a time coming where we're going to need the blood of the Lamb in our life. Here's the most important thing about this. When he went to each house and looked at each house, he didn't look in the house to see who was in there, how bad they were, if they smoked, if they drank. <coughs> what did he look at? 
He looked at the blood. Didn't he? So because he, if, if you trust in the blood of what Jesus Christ has done for you, He's the Lamb of God. He was slain for you. That's the greatest wisdom you could ever get brought into your attention is that knowledge that God sent His Son down here, died on the cross. He's the Lamb of God. And His blood will save you. He didn't ask you if you smoke. If you cuss. He said, do you believe in the blood of the Lamb? Because if you believe in the blood of the Lamb, He's going to start changing your life. When you start cussing, you're going to say, that spirit of his is going to say, Rod, that ain't, that's not how I want you to speak. When you tell a lie, like I caught my fish down there instead of over here, you're going to say, I'm sorry, Lord, I lied to you. This is what I want. You're going to, it's going to start changing your life a little bit. Slow, you're not going to change automatically. It's a work in pro progress that you, that you go through. That's important. That's the greatest wisdom any of you will ever hear in your entire life on planet earth is that Jesus, God loved you so much that he didn't just kill a little lamb and put the blood on him. He was just showing you what he was going to do later. That he sent his own son. His own son. That tells you how important that is to him. That he took his blood. He said, you believe in this and you put this on your family. When the time comes, I'm not going to look at your sins. I'm not going to look at what you. I'm going to look at what my son did for you. And it's his blood that covers all those sins for you. If you hadn't done that, we're going to pray right now and give you the opportunity to do that. Pray. Well, I just pray that these guys would understand that. If they don't understand it, may they come up and just, just, just talk about it when it's over. And I'm going to pray, Lord, and I wish if any, if any of these guys or gals have not done that, that they will right now. But, Father, I, I'm not perfect, Lord, and you know every sin in my life. There's nothing that I can say, think, or do that you don't know already. And you're still willing to die for me, still willing to, to give yourself for me. I believe that, Lord. I believe like that your word in Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you'd be saved. I believe that. So please forgive me of my sins. Why well, today I trust in my son and what he's done for me. And I believe that he rose up from that grave and he's with me now so that whatever I say, he hears it. Whatever I do, he's right there with me. Whatever I think, he's listening. And that he's, he's going to remind me that I'm his. And that he's going to say, Rod, don't say that. Don't do that. Don't think that. You're mine now. Be thankful. Lord, I am thankful for what you've done for me. And because of that, it's going to change the way I live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, guys. Here. 2017. So bring somebody with you. You know, somebody that needs to be out on the water, needs to enjoy the, 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 the time God's given us, and most importantly, he needs to hear the truth of the gospel and how it's saved. That's, that's what we're about. The big fish for today. Who was that? Got the big fish too. Mm -hmm. That is the big fish. All right. So the big fish of the day went to the hard-working team. Now I remember when they weighed in a fish one time and it fell through the basket. <laughs> <laughs> they had a little hole. Got little holes in the basket and it fell through the basket. Not anymore. Today, the big fish, Charles Irvin Henderson and Dennis Reynolds with a one point.
two. Two point one two five pound fish and one hundred thirty five dollars. All oh, right. Thank you, sir. This is the first term of the year we're getting knocking out the con. <laughs> Fifth place. Mm. If you got enough money to put a little gas in your boat, buy some more minnows and cover your engine. Fifth place is Kevin Blevins and Chris Miller. Where are you guys at? And they have seven fish weigh 10.710 pounds. Congratulations.